Hello and welcome to this edition of the Angels and Destiny show. Why is this show called this, you may ask, so I'll tell you. The accepted meaning of angel is messenger and the accepted meaning of destiny is to make firm establish. So my guests and I bring you messages to establish what you need to know in the present. And also I like working with angels and the calmness they bring. Now, in a moment, I will introduce you to my wonderful guest, Jess Babico. But before that, I would like to say thank you so much for watching the show live or at a later date, as it means a lot to me to connect with like-minded women. If you've never met before, then my name is Ray, and I love to help women to cross roads in their life, heal their past, create their future, and transform their present, so they can take charge of their destiny in the here and now. I'm the founder of Radiant Angel Energy, and I use angelic Reiki, future life progression, past life regression, meditation, angel cards, and hypnosis to help women who feel lost get clear on their reason for being here. And I've also created a transformational journey to help you take charge of your destiny. Now, each episode of the show covers various themes of your journey, a mini guided meditation or angel card reading with the wisdom of my wonderful guests, like today's guest, Jess Bubico, about listening to your intuition, aligning with higher truth and shadow work to navigate the massive shift in consciousness that the world is experiencing at the moment. Now, Jess is an intuitive medium and intuition educator dedicated to teaching intuitive cultivation for personal empowerment and global contribution for the highest good by awakening you to the unique language your intuition speaks to you. Step into your purpose and gifts and manifest the life you desire. Now, Jess hosts Awaken Your Intuition podcast and runs a six-week deep dive discovery and celebration of the unique, one-of-a-kind individual that you came here to be. With testimonials such as, I started working with Jess at a point in my life where I didn't quite know what or who I wanted to be. Now I'm on the right path and everything I've learned, I will take with me for the rest of my life. And it's hard to put into words just how impactful Jess has been. I now know what my intuitive gifts are and exactly how to use them whenever I need them. So without further delay, hello Jess and welcome to the Angels of Destiny show. How are you today? Hi, I'm so good. Thank you so much for having me today. Brilliant. Thank you for coming on. So before we get into this fascinating conversation, I want to remind you that you can also ask questions, leave comments and thoughts, as both Jess and I want you to be part of this show. So please do not be shy. So Jess, why don't you tell us about your journey to where you are now and how we can work with spirit and step into alignment with our highest truth during these times of massive, massive change? Yeah, absolutely. So again, thank you so much for having me here today. I'm really, really excited to be here and to be talking all about intuition and working with spirit, um, especially at times like these, because we are, we're in times of huge, massive shift. I don't think anybody would disagree with that at this point in time. Um, I think we're probably all on the same page with that. Um, so as you said, I'm an intuitive medium and intuition educator. And I really love helping people get in touch with and in tune with how their intuition speaks with them, how their higher self speaks with them. Um, I started out in the metaphysical realm, I guess you could say the spiritual realm about 2013. So I guess in a con I would say in a conscious way. So when I was younger, I had many experiences with people who had crossed over and I always called it having good ESP. You know, I'd go to the grocery store with my mom. We, I was like seven, we'd check out at the, the checkout desk, counter, whatever. And I'd say, you know, the bill is going to, you know, the, the, whatever, the bill is going to be $7 or, you know, $70 and 82 cents. And it would be like $7 and 82 cents or 83 cents. Like, and I was seven. So, you know, it's not like I knew what things really cost at yeah. that. Age. You know, I just, just had that knowingness, that clear cognizance. And so when I was young, my um, myself, my grandmother and my mom, my mom's mom, were all born on the same day. We're all born March 22nd. And when I was in high school, she was hit by a car and killed when she was walking across the street. And like I said, I always knew I was very tuned into energies and people who had crossed over. I'd had many friends when I was younger, parents cross or grandparents, just a lot of um, people who were kind of close in my sphere of influence who crossed over. And I always felt like I could see them, feel them, sense them. And so when my grandmother passed, um, you know, my mom had seen her 
and it was very traumatic. So she had, um, I think a bit of PTSD afterwards. And so my mom said to me, I used to every night when I was like 16 or 17, I'd go to bed at night and I would, what I, the time I called it praying to my grandma and I would just talk to her in my head. And I said to her this one night, you know, mom's been saying she wants to have a dream about you, but she's not able to, you know, she would, you, can you go visit her in her dreams? And as I'm saying this, I could feel a presence sitting on my bed, rubbing my back. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm like 16, 17. I'm like, I'm nuts. Like, this is crazy. But what could it hurt to just tell her to go, you know, like just tell her to visit like worst case scenario, nothing happens. And then I know I'm crazy. Um, and so the next morning I wake up and I walk down the stairs for breakfast and my mom's like, Jess, I had this crazy dream. I was looking through a keyhole into your bedroom and I could see grandma sitting on your bed. And I said, well, that's wild because I was talking to her last night sit while she was sitting on my bed and I told her to go and see you. And so it was really like, that was such a critical point for me because it took what I knew intuitively, but you know, everyone, when I think when I was younger, sort of like wrote it off as me being really overly sensitive or, you know, whatever it was written off of at the time as, um, you know, it really validated it. And so I went through my schooling, I went through my master's degree, became a speech therapist and found myself at this place going, what do I want? I'm not really happy being in a nine to five job. And I know there's something more here. It felt like a lot of what I was doing wasn't addressing a root cause of what was often happening with families and all of that. So I dove into my journey of um, studying spiritual studies and, and cultivating a connection and relationship with my own intuition. And I ended up from there starting to do readings. And then I found that most people who would come to see me were highly intuitive women um, who had never really been validated in their experience, but they knew that they were. So um, I started teaching people how to open up to and connect with their intuition, bring through their spiritual gifts. Um, and so that's really how I got to where I am today. <laughs> I, Go ahead. So, so what did you do to actually um, learn about your intuition and tap into it and and, you know, and, and start working towards what you're doing now? Great question. So I, truth be told, I remember it was the summer I had gotten a job as a speech therapist in a school. And I was like, I can't work a nine to five job. And that's like, it's like eight to four, not even eight to four. It was like eight to three. I'm like, I can't do this. I'm stuck inside all day. Help, you know? And I loved the kids I worked with. I really did. Um, and I loved the families and I really loved the school, but it was just the, it, the structure wasn't working. And I felt like I had no options. Um, I'm like, no matter what, I'm going to have to be in this kind of job. And so I went to a psychic in Charlotte, which was where I was living, Charlotte, North Carolina, running uh, people from the U.S. who are watching. And I'm like, what do I do? Like, I don't know what to do. <laughs> and uh, during the reading, I said, you know, I feel like I can do what you do. I just I feel like I can. And I told her about the experience with my grandma and she was like, of course you can. Like I have a class coming up, take this class. So I took her class that led me to meeting my first mentor who was also a medium who was also named Jess. And at the time, it's so funny to me because I've been traveling for two years and everything I do is on the computer. Um, and I'm so used to the computer as my medium. Like I used to go to her house every week and we used to sat, sit in this magical space um, that she had. It was like her room and we would connect with angels and um, learn to channel. And then it was just going out and sharing, like go out and share, take more classes, dive deeper, do the work, um, which then led into more of the shadow work and going through my priestess training and priestess initiation and all of these different things that the work I feel like just keeps getting deeper and deeper yeah so so you so so you don't just work with um, your own intuition you actually work with goddesses as well I do a bit it's something that I've been getting into more and more as I have um, especially as I've gone through my priestess training and priestess initiation um, that is definitely something I've been working with more I teach the way I teach my classes is that I I have 
women with all different gifts, women and men. I'm actually starting a men's intuitive development group in a couple of weeks, which I'm really excited about. Um, but I create a space for everyone to come together. I usually do it in a group of no more than four and everybody's bringing through their gifts in their own unique way. So some people are channeling angels. Some people are connecting with the goddesses. You know, some people are very clairvoyant, et cetera. It just depends upon the person. Um, and so we kind of create space for people to discover whatever comes through for them, however it comes through. So, um, yeah, I work with all different, I work with all different things, always in the light, but all different modalities and. Yeah. Which, which, which you know, which, which is, which is pretty cool. You know, there, there's more than one thing, um, out there that, that, that we, that, that we can, um, we can deal with. And, you know, obviously we've got people watching today. So we've got Agard. Hello. Welcome. Thank you for tuning in today. Um, and Avisha. Hello. Thank you for tuning in and saying hello. And John. Hello. Thank you for tuning in. Um, it's lovely to uh, see you all here. And of course, if you have any questions as we go along, please do. Um, please do, please do ask them. So you've, you kind of like, um got all this intuition and um you're working with with that and you're running classes so what was the next part of your journey great question the next part of my journey um you know for me i think i was always a very science-based person um being in the i don't want to say i was always a very science-based person but being in the fields of speech therapy, I went the brain science route. And then I had this part of my life that was the very much the divine feminine. So I had sort of the divine masculine, which to me was much more knowledge based, much more structured. And then I came into this space of like the divine feminine and intuition and bringing all of this through. And so I felt like I was leading two separate lives because I ended up doing the speech therapy part for a while. Um, I went into like brain concussion, brain injury, et cetera. And then I had this other part of my life that was the divine feminine. And truthfully, as I'm saying this, even my life was sort of split like that. I was either like, go get it or like be. And I couldn't, I had a really hard time integrating the two. And so, um, you know, I, I went through, I was doing my studies. I started working with people one-on-one. -on -one, and then I started to really look at like, how do I take this and bring this to, I want to say a larger, I don't want to say a larger audience, but like, how do we integrate all of this into our day-to-day? -day? How do we take spirit and pull it through and, and use it in a way that allows, um, allows us to, to, integrate spirit into what we do. So it's not this separation. And so honestly and truly, I have been doing so much of that through my my work now, which is how do you bring spirit into whatever it is that you do? How do you bring spirit into um, your relationship? How do you bring spirit into the, um, the most simplest of things throughout your day? How do you bring spirit in as we're going through these massive changes? Um, and embody that and really step into what it is that you came here to do and that you, the, the special gifts that you have that are, I believe, come from our higher self, our higher truth. So um, that's really been my next step is that integration piece, both for myself as well as other people that I work with. Yeah, brilliant. And on we we've got a couple of watch parties going on. So we've got Keith who says hello on one of the watch parties, and Sonia's watching as well. So welcome to both of you for joining in, and please do ask questions. Obviously, they don't show up live on the actual show itself um, on the page, but we will get we will get with those questions. So working with spirit and stepping into into alignment, especially now with all the change that's going that's that's going on and then everything that seems to be happening at the moment um which, which obviously is quite a massive a massive change how are you working with that and how are you seeing people turn up and what issues are they coming up and what you're being guided to do yeah absolutely so um i had said this morning when we had chatted i'm like i'm glad that we that this is 
sort of where we're headed for today and what we're going to be talking about and bringing through because I think again it's no surprise to any of us that we're all in a time of massive change and we're all in a time of being in like a holding pattern having to sit here and look at ourselves look at our stuff um I think this is a again it's just a really interesting time of um yeah, of massive change of big shifts. I know we're in different countries, different places, different spaces. And for all of us, we're experiencing it all on different levels and in different ways. And um, I think now is an incredibly important time for all of us to be taking time to be sitting with ourselves. And I know most of us are because we, many of us can't go anywhere. I know things have started to really open up here. But when we're in a time of massive change, I think this is such an incredible and important time for us to be slowing down and for us to be really taking the time again to look inward and to take the time to call, um, to, to connect with our intuition. You know, each and every one of us, I'm sure most people here who are, are watching, you know, work with energy in some way, shape or form. Um, but I think this is a time for us to get really familiar with the way in which, especially if we're maybe on the beginning of our spiritual path, the way in which your higher self and your spirit um, comes through you. You know, how does intuition speak to you? And this is really the basics of so much that I teach. Everyone receives messages from their higher self. Everyone receives messages from their intuition. You know, some of us are very clairsentient. So we feel, we're the feelers of the world. We feel emotions. Some of us are very clairaudient. Um, you know, we, we hear very clearly messages from spirit. Some of us hear from, um, you know, we see, we have very vivid dreams. Some of us are the ones who are claircognizant. And then, you know, we all have access to all of it. We all have access to all of these spirit, you know, ways that our intuition speaks to us. I think it's about taking the time to really get familiar with how it works for you. You know, I talked a little bit about the idea of shadow work. And so many of us are, um, sometimes it's, it's hard to listen in certain areas or certain aspects of our lives because we have our own pain, we have our own grief, we have these things that have happened in our lifetime. And sometimes it's hard to listen in certain areas and certain aspects. And I think as we're here again in this bit of an incubator, I think it's really important for us to be taking time to look at our, our hurt and look at our pain and look at those places and spaces within ourselves as well that perhaps we've disowned. You know, when I came into quarantine, I came in with my family. And before quarantine, I was in Colorado. I was traveling. I've been traveling for two years. And my family, uh, I get this message, like, go back to Florida. And this was before quarantine happened. This was before the coronavirus really hit. And I kept getting this message of go back to Florida, you know, go back, spend time with family. And I'm like, that's so crazy. Like, I want to go see the world. My plan for 2020 was like, go to Peru and like, you know, go to all these sacred sites and do all this stuff. And I'm like, I don't want to go back to Florida. You know, I'm like, something yeah. but like a five-year-old. I'm like, I don't want to go back. Um, but in being back here, it has been such a profound transform. It's been profound because not only have um, I had the opportunity to work, to work on stuff with family, but they've also reflected back to me aspects of my own self that I had kind of like forgotten about on my journey, you know, like where maybe I was trying to step into like being the business owner or doing this or doing that. It was like, there's been this direct reflection back. Like, remember all this stuff you used to love doing? Like, are you still interested in that? Do you still like doing that? You know, all these different things. Um, I think we're, we're being asked in this time to sit with ourselves to listen to our intuition and again, to, to look at what's coming up, look at the shadow that's coming up because a lot of shadow is coming up and through. A lot is coming through the Facebook waves and the Instagram waves. And, you know, there's a, a lot of, of collective, you and I talked about this before, mm -hmm. like collective shadow that's coming up. And 
it's asking us to look not just at what's outside of us, I think, but also at what's inside of us. And it's not something to shame ourselves for and say, you're bad because you're still upset about that thing or, you know, there's something wrong with you. But I think it's really asking us to come in and like nurture ourselves and bring in that divine feminine and look at where we're still holding pain. We're still holding these things so that we can heal on a deeper level. And on when we give ourselves permission, I think first, you know, I think step one in any process when we're looking inward is acceptance you know, accepting that something is there and then coming into a space of forgiveness, forgiveness of ourselves, forgiveness of someone else. Sometimes that's really hard. And it might include some of that as we were talking about the goddesses, like sacred rage, like we're angry, you know, there's stuff coming up. But if it's, if we don't look at it, you know, if I keep taking a box and put it under, under my bed and I keep putting stuff in it, it's still under my bed. It's not gone anywhere just because I can't see it in plain view. So again, as we're stepping in and we're giving ourselves permission to see these things, we see them manifesting outside of ourselves. We see them manifesting within ourselves. I think it's really important to have compassion for yourself, to have space to do these things for yourself um, and to listen to spirit spend time whatever way connects you to that divine feminine whether um it is your you know dancing in your home if it's meditation if it's connecting with angels if it's using oracle cards whatever it is that allows you to connect with it it's that higher self is is not here to judge or shame any of us for those things that are coming up, that things, the things that are coming through us again, that way maybe we've pushed down or have forgotten about. Um, but it's really here to bring loving presence and to, to help us to e evolve and shift and grow and change in so many ways. So I think this is an incredible time because we do have to get quiet. Um, you know, I, I think about human design Human, if, if anybody here is familiar with human design and you know your human design um, uh, type, you can go ahead and drop it into the comments. But um, for, for those that don't know human to define. Yeah. What yeah. is it? Yeah. So human design is um, it's basically a system that brings together like astrology and the chakra system, the I Ching. It brings together uh, quantum physics and it, it looks at, who are you? What is your, your makeup? You know, what is it? Basically, I think of it like the engine for or the manual for your car. Okay. It's telling, it's giving you, um, looking at how your energy works. Are you somebody who's here to work from nine to five, you know, bring, look, are you somebody here is supposed to work in spurts? You know, everybody's supposed to work a little bit different or works a little bit differently. And so human design allows us to look at our own energy and allows us to look at who we are um, and then align our lives to that. Many of us in human design have what's called emotional authority. 50% of the population they say has emotional authority, which is really needing to go through that wave of that high and that low in order to create and to understand yourself. So again, I think each of us are designed so much more so different, you know, where none of us are meant to do things in the same way. So I think it's really important to honor your own process as you go through this, you know, um, because you're meant to process in your own unique way and discover yourself in your unique way and holding that acceptance and love and compassion, even when our uglier parts are coming up, can can create massive shifts in our lives. Yeah, to totally. Yeah, it, it, it is kind of like, rem yeah, remembering our own unique um, individuality, you know, we are part of every, you know, everyone, we're, we're, all, this, we're all the same energy, but we're unique in our own way that we're expressing um, we're, we're expressing it and that's why sometimes we get caught up in the collective energies of issues going around because what's happening to somebody technically is happening to you um, but you're not you don't realize that on a personal level but it is on a collective level um, that that's happening to you you kind of need to take that step back and say okay what is my own personal um, journey on on this you know what am I what you know 
what am I supposed to be doing, not what this, what is everyone else supposed to be doing, and I'm supposed to be following the same thing as them. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's it is. It's it's we're all here together, experiencing the same energy and this, you know, the same energy of this time. And so I think it does. It activates us all in very different ways, depending upon where we're at in our journey and you know who we're with and different for everyone yeah and um going going back to um to to intuition and i know there are some people that go yeah but i never get anything you know i, I try you know i think oh you know if people tell me intuition and i think yes i should know what intuition is but i don't get anything and i don't know what i'm supposed to you know what i'm supposed to do you know i've, I've sat in meditation and i don't get anything you know I've sat there trying to do automatic writing and I don't, you know, and I don't get anything. So, you know, those those people that kind of like say, I don't think I've got in, intuition because whatever I do just doesn't, doesn't, you know, just I just don't get anything. Um, mm -hmm. you, you know, what, what would you say? What would you say to those and how would you suggest they go about trying to actually um, acknowledge and tap in that they do have the intuition? That's a great question. So I have a family member who is like, I'm not intuitive. And then we'll be in the same space. I will think of something and it will come out of his mouth like in five seconds. Like it's like I sent the thought to him and it came out of his mouth and he would be like, I'm not intuitive. So I would say a couple things. Number one, everyone is intuitive. Everyone's intuition speaks to them in different ways. And we are all here to be different, to bring our own gifts to the table. We are all here to do things in our own way. And so um, we're all here to receive intuition in our own way. And so what I would say, number one, is that um, I think intuition is portrayed often in the media in very specific ways. Like you, you kind of can put yourself into a certain box. It's like, I am the one who sees things, you know, I have visions, I have these grand visions and that means that I'm psychic, intuitive, et cetera. But everybody receives in their own way. And so I would say that number one, it might be cool for you to like look at and read on different types of intuition and the different ways that intuition come through. If you're somebody who's particularly logical and you're like, you kind of like the hard facts, I would say a couple things, number one, read up on it, um, learn about it. And maybe something will be sparked inside of you where you're like, oh yeah, that, I don't think I'm intuitive because I don't have prophetic dreams. And yet I always, every time I think of this person or that person, they always end up calling. That's intuition, right? Like that's, that's being able to perceive energy in a certain way. Um, so I would say that, and I would say, um, human design is great because human design lays directly out in your chart what type of intuition is is unique to you um literally in it so you just might not be paying attention to it because you're it's coming in a way that you're not expecting it so oftentimes this information comes in as it goes out as quickly as it came in and so you know you might not think you are because it's so subtle and it's so normal to you you know i think Again, I think media portrays it as something very disruptive to our lives. And oftentimes it's very subtle. And so I love my class that I, I'm in. I have a group going through right now because there's four of them. And I don't ever usually tell anyone this. So if you're listening, you're in on a, a little secret which is no longer a secret. Like week one, we drop right in and we're like, okay, let's do it. We're going to do a reading and see what happens. And most people are like, oh my God, how, I just, th I thought it was making this up. Like I didn't think this was real. So it's so subtle and it feels so normal. You're picking up on energy all of the time. So I would say it, it's probably, it's not that you're not intuitive. It just might be that it's a normal for you. So you don't really notice it. B, you might be thinking intuition is something different than it actually is. So educate yourself. You know, if you're interested in taking classes, take classes, learn how to listen um, in your own unique way, because you'll start to pay attention to and trust that information as it comes through. You know, I love taking people through reading someone else because you might 
have this sort of passing image of a koala bear in a bandana and a jazzercise outfit. And you say it and you're like, this sounds like the most crazy thing I've ever told anybody, but I'm seeing an image of a koala in a bandana and a jazzercise outfit. And the person just starts hysterically crying. And they're like, I had a panda when I was a kid and I used to dress it in a bandana and a jazzercise outfit. And then you're like, oh my gosh, who knew? And I saw it as an image and it didn't come out as like this big bright image. It was just a mild image in my mind. Okay. So next time I talk to somebody and I see an image of something, let me bring it up and see if it makes sense to them. It didn't look like a motion picture in my mind, but it did look like a very subtle image, you know? And, and so I can trust that more next, next time. It's kind of like riding a bike. So we all innately can ride a bike, except, you, you <laughs> except <can>. me. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, There's a story behind that, which we won't go into. (laughs) Um, You could ride a bike. You could. (laughs) Um, Maybe. Anyways, but, you know, it's just, it's that, I think it's that practice and that practicing and flexing that trust muscle that allows us to understand it in deeper ways. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And we've had uh, a few people um, that have uh, been... um, uh, saying so um i got um us are you an angel I'm not sure whether that was to us or somebody who's writing in arabic um which is which is interesting um so aga also says um in a balance and that and obviously connect with your higher self oh and there you go see with open hearts absolutely um and keith says agree on both fronts um uh, i got closed doors are open now uh yeah, let go, let go of fears. Bring love into the darkest corners. You know, this is all about the, the shadow work. Um, and Keith says, it's always been there. It's a question as if you're prepared for your inner self. Yeah. Um, and acceptance of self. Um, and obviously Keith agrees with mirror work. Oh, and um, he and um, John has asked uh, what what mirror work is. So I don't know if um, Keith uh, has said about it, but um, uh, let's see. There you go. Um, look yourself in the eye and see the naked self. Mm-hmm. And that, um, so to do the love we do, it isn't really work. Um, and that's so, um, our own characteristics. There you go, penny drop moments. And that, you're explaining this very well, Keith. Yeah. Um, the body is receiver of info and the brain deciphered it. Um, and I got, um, I always say I know that and I wait on others before I give my, yeah, reading say, yeah, yeah it, it's kind of like, yeah, you shouldn't be waiting for other people, you know. If, if you get it, say it. Um, and then, and you know, she agrees it's normal all life. Um, she thought what she was making up was a was a fantasy, and and then, you know, and then that's the that's the way, you know, if things just come straight into your head, then the chances are it is intuition, you know. And even if you were making it up, but it makes sense to somebody everything starts with a thought and intuition um you you know like the person who designed the wheel you know they the first thing they thought oh, well am i making this up yeah but but they created the wheel everything starts in that imaginal realm yeah you know it's as children we daydream don't we mm-hmm. and then we go into these fantasy worlds and who know you know who's to say it is fantasy and it's not real 
And they right. said, only us as, as um, human adults that kind of like, oh, no, 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 that, you know, imaginary friends. And it's like, but those that know, well, no, it wasn't imaginary friend. It was actually a real, a real friend. Yeah. Well, and, and I think so many, you know, for me personally, as I started getting into this work, it was like re-meeting myself more so than it was like, let me figure out what I want to do next. It was like, let me surrender and come back to the state of being that feels innate for me. That's been the, yeah, that's felt really innate for me. Yeah. Children are the best teachers. They're amazing. And I think it's like almost reactivating our childlike state. It's like we have kids and then I think we often, they learn how to be certain ways or who to be. And then, you know, we spend a lot of time undoing that. I think as we get older, not that there was anything wrong with it. It was necessary. We needed to learn that. Um, and I think it's just, yeah, kids are amazing. They're the best teachers. They remind us to play and to have fun and to be ourselves. Um, but yeah, everything starts in imagination. The chair I'm sitting on, like somebody had to think of it, started in a non-tangible and then we humans take that and translate it into, you know, this form, which is pretty amazing when you think about it. It's like, you know, we, we take ideas and we make them into things. Like we are the conduit. We are the medium between the non-physical realm and the physical realm. Yeah, exactly. And Aga works in a kindergarten, you know, and it's a blessing to spend time with kids. Yeah. And, and that, you know, and it's nice, nice that you, you feel that, that way, you know, that you were called to work with children and help them develop in, in you know, in, into who they're meant to be, their own unique um, in individual, individual little people to grow into bigger individual people that know what they're what they're doing absolutely yeah thank you for the work that you do because it's it is it's so important i think for kids to have that loving space to be able to be themselves and to express themselves and to learn and grow and um i always say teachers and anybody that's working with kids i'm like oh it's such a special and important job and especially during times like this because things have changed so much you know with with how schools are and what we're doing at home and, and you never know the impact you're having on someone yeah and um keith says sometimes i see children who are said to have the gift of sight yes they do but the parents so want to believe um everything the child gives but as i've seen sometimes it's the child needing attention yeah yeah it just depends there's so much that we learn with our behaviors to get attention and love and, you know, affection and all of that. And sometimes it is just, yeah, needing attention, but we all need it, right? Our inner child, probably all of our inner childs just need a little bit of love. And sometimes. Exactly. Yes. We, we really should love our, love, love our, love our inner, inner child. So as you know, I do guided meditations, angel card readings. Um, and each week I like to ask my guests whether they would like a mini guided meditation or an angel card for themselves and those watching. So Jess, what would you like me to do? It's so interesting because I would have thought I would say angel card, but for some reason I'm feeling like guided meditation is, is the jam today. Okay, that's, that's fine. We're going with your intuition. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. So using your intuition, where do you think the guy I should take the guided meditation? Um, I'm seeing the color blue. Mm -hmm. So I'm feeling like perhaps throat chakra. Um, and where do you mean physical location? Um, just in general, where you think think it, it should where 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 you getting picked up, it should what lines it should go along. I'm getting um I'm doing, I'm getting thro like throat, right. throat chakra communication, but I'm also, and I'm seeing water. Okay. So, okay. So what we um, want to do, so I want everyone to um, close your eyes. And as you do so, I want you to take a deep breath in. And on the out breath, just release everything that doesn't need to be in this space at this time. 
and just allow your breathing to flow into its natural state, allowing each in-breath to relax you more and more and each out-breath just releasing everything that doesn't need to be in this space. Now I want you to give yourself permission to totally relax your whole body. You want to be relaxed from the top of your head to the tips of your toes, and all the way down your arms and your fingers. For as you think about relaxing, so you will relax. As you feel the top of your head relaxing, the back of your head relaxing, your forehead, your temples, your eyes, your eyelids feeling so heavy and relaxed, your ears relaxing, your cheeks relaxing, your mouth and your jaw relaxing your neck relaxing, this relaxation moves down into your shoulders and your shoulders feel so relaxed like warm sunshine just massaging them as the relaxation moves down your upper arms into your elbows, your lower arms, your wrists, your hands and your fingers. And this relaxation moves into your upper body. You feel your chest muscles relax, your stomach muscles relax, the whole of your back relaxed, your spine relaxing vertebrae by vertebrae by vertebrae. As the relaxation moves down into your hips and your pelvis and your buttocks, Moving further down into your thighs, your knees, your shins, your calves, your ankles, your feet and your toes. And your whole body is just relaxed. So, so relaxed. And this relaxation moves from your physical body into your emotional feeling body. As you start to feel that totally relax and it feels that you're just floating around. Just floating around but still sitting down where you are. And it's such a beautiful feeling to be so relaxed physically and emotionally. And you now notice that you're surrounded in a beautiful shade of blue. It's a beautiful blue that feels so calm and relaxed. It might be navy blue or it might be sky blue or pale blue. But it's a blue that is just for you at this time. And you notice that the blueness seems to concentrate around your throat. And you might feel that your throat's a little bit tight. You might feel that you need to cough or that you've been holding something back. And the blue on your throat just seems to get brighter and brighter just shining a brighter and brighter blue as this blue just starts to fill you up completely. It's like your throat is opening up, allowing all this beautiful blue energy to come out, to surround you, to connect with every living thing, and it just feels so wonderful and releasing just to allow all this energy out of your throat. And your throat starts to feel so much better. It feels so relaxed. 
There's no coughing, no tightness. Just easy breathing. Your Adam's apple just moving gently up and down. And it's so beautiful to have your throat chakra so clear, so wonderfully clear and bright. And you notice that the blue around you is starting to fade away, just fading away into a shimmer. So there's this shimmer around you now, a shimmer that's just like water, a reflection of water as it shimmers, like being by a beach on a sunny day with the beautiful shimmering of the water and that feeling of being by the beach and being by the water or being in the water, of being alive, fully present and enjoying life. And this is what this shimmering around you feels like. It feels like it's energizing you, calming and soothing, feeling so wonderful so refreshed and energized and cleansed. And I'll just allow you for a moment to allow this cleansing energy, this beautiful shimmering energy to flow around you. Now it's time for you to come back, your throat clear, you're feeling so energized. So I'm going to count to five and by the time I get to five, you'll be fully back, fully refreshed and fully present. Coming back now, one, coming back two, coming back three. Coming back four, maybe wiggle fingers and toes. Make sure you're fully back, fully present. Five, you're fully back, fully present. Open your eyes and welcome back. And if you have some water by you or something, please do have a drink. That was lovely. Thank you so much. Ah, you're welcome. It was, I, mean, I, I never know where, because all my guided meditations have all channeled, so I never actually know where. Um, there you go. So whilst people are coming back, you know, um, you know, I'll, I'll put some po posts up, you know, why you, um, uh, you know, you know, please do feel sh free to share your experiences of that, what you felt, how you um, felt, feel now. I mean, Aga, before we got into meditation, so she was out in the forest all day, best time to ground in and play with fairies. Um, which is pretty cool. Um, yep, Archangel Mikael. And it's, it's funny, though, um, because uh, in my um, uh, Angel Wings membership group, that's who we've been working with um, today with Archangel Mikael, um, his energy. And before we started, when you mentioned about Blue, Bathsheba said, we've seen Blue too. Again, that's interesting. Yeah, me too. No, so much, so much intuition. Uh, Avisha, you're welcome. And Keith, yep, uh, you're, you're welcome. So, so, so please, everyone, you know, do share what your experience of that guided meditation was, whether you've got any insights, whether your throat feels a lot clearer now, um, you, you know, you know what, what, you, what you're feeling. I mean, how, how are you feeling, Jess? Great. I might have to go take a nap after this. Like, that was so lovely. So beautiful. Thank you. Uh, you're welcome. And you know something? I'm going to do an angel card as well. Beautiful. Hey, yeah. we got time. Why not? Exactly. Exactly. So let's uh, cleanse and bless the cards. 
And and of course, um, for those that um, are new and, and don't know, when I do the cards, I um, do the cards for what we need to know for your highest good at this moment in time, which seems contradictory um, because although I work with the past, to me, the past is clearing the past so you can be fully present. And though I work with the future, it's kind of like you know the future to be fully present. So everything comes back to present. So when I do cards, it's what we need to know for our highest good at this moment in time. So... What does Jess and everyone who's watching this need to know for their highest good this moment in time? And Keith did actually ask us to do a card as well. So he just said, whoop, whoop. Yeah, <laughs> um, came out, which is really good. Begin now. Take your first step. How appropriate um, is that card? Super appropriate. Um, that, that is so, so um, appropriate. You know, I, I don't really need to say much um, uh, about it because it, it just literally says everything that is going on now. You, you know, we are beginning to start again now. We, we've kind of like, it's kind, it's kind of like with COVID-19, it's kind of like been a chance of cleansing and getting ready to start again. Um, with 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 a new with a new higher purpose, and that so yes, everyone watching, um, you know, take you know begin begin start to trust in your intuition, um, stepping into who you truly are, experiencing and learning as much as you possibly can. Um, uh, be be before um, and obviously just with you, you know it's. You're going to be moving soon into um, a new place. So again, it's it's a new start for you and beginning. Uh, Absolutely. For it, and Keith says the past and the present is in the here and now, most definitely. Oh, and that's what you're saying earlier, Keith. We're, we're, yeah, see, see, Keith, you asked and I answered. I, I, I did a I did a card um, for you. So everyone, I hope you have um, found enjoyed the show and found it insightful, and that the words of wisdom um, Jess has given you will help you further on your journey. So Jess, do you have any insights or thoughts to leave our viewers? Yeah, I think the card that you pulled is like it's beautiful, it's perfect, and like just get started now. Get started listening now. You know, start paying attention to what's coming through for you on a day-to-day -day basis what are thoughts that drop in consistently that are thoughts of change or things that you want to do differently or you know where are parts of yourself that maybe you're being a little hard on yourself and you need to give yourself a little bit of loving and and tenderness and care um just get started now you know now is the time brilliant thank you so much so jess if people want to connect with you um how do they do that Great question. My um, website is justtheintuitive.com and you can find me on Instagram also as at justtheintuitive. Excellent. And do, and you know, and do check her, um, uh, Jess out and what, and what she has to, uh, what she has to offer. And her website looks really good. It's a, it's a really, really nice, easy uh, <laughs> site to, uh, to, to get around. You can check out all the testimonials on there um, as, as well. Um, so thank you everyone for watching and of course if you have reached that crossroads in your life and you need help finding your destiny and getting clear on your path then I would love to be that guide for you. Reach out and connect with me and we can arrange a free 20 to 30 minute video call to discuss how I can help you on your journey and of course the Angel Wings community um, membership is open where you get a chance to uh, grow with ascended masters archangels goddesses gods and uh, oracle cards to uh, spread your wings and soar to become um, and soar into becoming who who you are and of course um, i'm looking at running the retreat down in glassbury in october i am still running september one obviously the october one um, will depend on on what goes on so if you're if you're interested in that then please do um, uh, check out the uh, link and message me that you're interested. And then come August, when we know exactly what's going on, we'll know if we're going down there. So thank you everyone so much for watching. And I would like to invite you to share this video, as I'm sure there are more women who feel lost and want to get clear on their destiny, just like you. And I look forward to you joining me um, at the same time next week, where my guests will be um, Graham Baker. 
and we will say good keith says yep thank you i've enjoyed thank you so much uh got on with the mirror work excellent and that and joy says hello ladies cheers thank you so much for uh watching joy or watching the replay because i know sometimes you can't get in right in the beginning of the, of, of the show so if you didn't catch it do watch the replay it was really fascinating with what jess had to um tell us about intu um, intuition at this time. So thank you again, everyone, so much for watching. And thank you, Jess, for being on the show. Um, it's thank been wonderful having you. And I will see you all next week. Bye.